22 minutes after the hour, Michael Patrick Shields, uh, Congressman Mike Rogers, the Republican from Brighton, on the phone. Uh, not sure where you are this morning. Where do we find you, sir? I am in actually Lansing, Michigan, on what? my way to a meeting. You realize we're right here on the Avenue of Michigan, just a couple blocks I from know, the Capitol. I know, I know. I should have swung by. The only problem is that they're almost all at the same time. And, well. as, and as good as you are, Michael, I'm not that good. I can't be in two places at once. <laughs> well, you would be on television and on Fox 47, and you would be here with uh, Senator Alan Cropsey, who is with us from DeWitt. And uh, we're also with uh, State Senator a Jason. great guy, by the way. Well, Just don't tell him I said that. Oh, no, no. It goes to his head too quickly. Pretty good compliment. Well, anything that goes to your head, Senator Cropsey, has a long way to go does, because you're really tall. Does. And uh, State Senator Jason Allen uh, from uh, the Traverse City, northern Michigan area is with us, too. And State Representative Wayne Schmidt uh, from... Uh, the Traverse City area running for re-election this year too. So we have four all, all good guys indeed. A Republican roundtable to be sure. Um, let me get your reaction if I can, since uh, Senator Allen is here, to the fact that uh, just so we can get this sure. straight, you've decided not to we go for the recall. We decided to uh, take the recall and and we uh, se uh, seek a lot of counsel. Mm -hmm. And it's a very difficult decision, but we felt that getting 15 votes in a recount was not possible. And we wish Mr. Beneshek or Dr. Beneshek well. Well, you know historically that uh, Congressman Rogers had a, a tough sure, scrape yeah. of his own. So the, the two of you, I, w I can think, could, could commiserate a little bit. That was very, um, I mean, that was shocking news, wasn't it, Congressman Rogers, to hear that at one point there was one vote separating the, the opponents there? Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. And listen, Jason is a great guy. He was a great candidate. Uh, he's done a great job in the state legislature. I'm... I'm uh, you know, sorry that uh, it didn't work out better for him, but um, I think it is a class act to step up to the plate when there is so much at stake in this country and say, I am not uh, going to go through this recount. Um, a, I, I agree with them. Probably the odds, I have been, have been through a 38-day recount myself in one of my campaigns. Uh, they're not turned around very often, if at all. Uh, they're very expensive, and it throws uh, it really throws a lot of momentum to the other team. So... My hat's off to Jason. He's a very class act. He ran a classy campaign, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there's great things in his future. I mean, I think I know there's good things in his future. Thank you. Did anybody come to you and try to convince you not to go through with the recount? We uh, uh, worked through uh, a variety of different individuals. We talked about uh, what the, the ramifications were. Uh, we had telephone calls over last weekend talking about you know what you should be doing. And we just uh, we uh, looked for counsel and, and prayed about it, and this was the direction we felt was the best way to go. Did the Snyder, did Rick Snyder talk to you at all about it or his campaign? Uh, they have not. Uh, I've talked to Rick Snyder on a couple different occasions, probably very similar to what the congressman has. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did not intervene in this in any way. What was the what, what made you decide not to do it? Well, statistically, it yeah. becomes very difficult, at, uh, probably above 10 votes, to win this sort of a recount because of the new technologies. And when you take a look after the Florida experience and what's been upgraded with uh, Terry Lynn Land and, and her team, and, and a lot came from Washington under the Bush administration, uh, these problems are, are much uh, more difficult to find and, uh, and changes. So, so we supported the decision to not uh, recount. At that stage, do you still have to make a concession call, or did you? Oh, yes, I did. I did that on Monday morning. How did that go? It went fine. It was very pleasant. Hmm. It was tough, certainly, but I wish Dr. Benichek well. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about this uh, coming up here, but while we have the congressman on the phone, before he goes to his meeting, President Obama urging the Senate now to pass a small business aid bill that's been blocked, as I understand it, by Republicans. Has that already been through the House, or would it be coming your way next, or w what do you make of that? Yeah, there was. Uh, it went through the, the, the House of Representatives. You know, it, there was. this thing is anything but a jobs bill, and it's just that's been our source of frustration it adds to the to the debt and the deficit. Uh, it, it it makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for any small business to even qualify for the kinds of A credits or money that they're talking about. Uh, and this is all about election year politics and has nothing to do with jobs. And I think the American public is finally starting to figure out that this guy doesn't get it. You can't put all of these hurdles in front of the recovery and wonder why that we're actually losing jobs again. Uh, it is the most frustrating thing. And remember, they've already got more deficit spending than all of the other presidents of the United States combined. Uh, it, it is more bureaucracy. It, as a matter of fact, we talk to small businesses. They say, listen, I'm a small business. I can't even go through the paperwork to try to qualify for what they're trying to offer me 
to do good things in the economy when the right thing to do is get the heck out of the way. There's two over $2 trillion of private capital that is ready to unleash uh, on the economy. And what's holding it up? All of the policies of the United States government. Cap and trade, this bill that actually adds more regulation, uh, the, the, this health care bill that has just over a trillion dollar cost and huge regulation to businesses, it is absolutely slowing down our ability to get jobs. And I think the best thing we could do is maybe have them go on another vacation or another round of golf uh, which I think America might be a lot better off. <laughs> um, what did you make of this? Uh, I don't know if you heard. You probably heard about this. Somebody uh, threw a pie at Senator Levin in Big Rapids, uh, Michigan. It turns out it was a Michigan State University student, anti-war protester, now jailed on two hundred fifty thousand dollars bond, felony count of stalking, and other charges. Have you ever had anything like that happen to you? We've had a lot of crazy things happen. I have never had a pie thrown at me, and they probably looked at the size of me and figured out I would probably appreciate a pie coming my way. Um, I, it's, it's really not a laughing matter, however, that the, the fact that, that uh, somebody would take a step to, uh, it, to really what amounts to assault uh, uh, of Levin, there's lots of ways to have your voices and your dissent heard. Uh, physical altercation is not one of them. And, you know, if you remember, Michael, I've had my office vandalized, my yeah. staff has been threatened, I have been threatened. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, unfortunately, that's not something anybody ought to tolerate. Um, you know, it's, it's just an unfortunate uh, thing that they think that's the way they have to, uh, to have their dissent heard. All right, thank you very much. Good luck in your meeting. We'll see you soon. Hey, thanks, Michael. Congressman Mike Rogers, the Republican. Oh, by the way, Michael, you had all those good-looking guys there. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to show up for TV this week. Uh, <laughs> go Thank away. You, <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, now let me just get back to this for sure. just a moment, because uh, the people have come to know you very well right. on, on this radio station yes, in Traverse City and okay. Petoskey, yeah. and not only that, but here in the state capitol, you're a very well-known figure. Um, what's next? Uh, you know, we really don't know. Uh, much like Senator Cropsey, we're uh, uh, done in January. Uh, certainly, we're uh, going to be focusing our time helping Rick Snyder get elected uh, governor. I think it's critical for our state to get a Republican governor. If you sit down, and I encourage people to, to look at his website mm -hmm. and see what his plan is going to be. And so I've been in contact with their uh, northern Michigan team. Uh, Greg Andrews is the field coordinator out of Petoskey, and we've been strategizing the 40 counties north of Clare and uh, making sure that we've got a, a plan put together. It's similar to what I did for... Uh, President Bush in both of his elections, and mm -hmm. then also John McCain. And so that's, uh, that's what we've been spending our last couple of days on, is trying to figure out where are the, the key counties that we need to be working on and, and the strategies there. Are you in consideration for lieutenant governor? Uh, I, you know, I have not been talked to by Rick Snyder on for lieutenant governor. I've seen that my name, <coughs> name is on a list. Mm -hmm. w whether I'm a selected or whoever, certainly I would be interested, but our number one job is to get a Republican governor elected. I think it's uh, key, uh, key for our state for turnaround. And, and what he has got laid out in those 10-point plans are similar to what I've worked on. You know, the downtown package, bringing the, the folks uh, uh, into our cities is very important, restructuring the tax uh, uh, strategies. And then how are we going to make sure we have a clean environment and a business-friendly environment is, is some of the things that he's working on, and I wholeheartedly endorse those. Uh, if you don't get selected as running mate, would you be interested in the Michigan Economic Development Corporation under the Snyder administration? I, I, can, I would be willing to do what is ever necessary, but I, I think I want to tell you that the key issue is, is that, you know, much like Representative Schmidt, we can always go back and sell shirts and ties. <laughs> and so we already have jobs. At Captain's <laughs> Quarters on <laughs> right. Front Street. And so, you know, uh, certainly I, I would be uh, very honored to do those types of jobs, but our, our key is to make sure that we can get uh, uh, Mr. Snyder across the line and, and uh, turn the state around. Will you move back to Traverse City now? Uh, we're very happy in Alanson. It's been, yeah? it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, uh, you know, it was great to be at church on Sunday and a wonderful uh, uh, little uh, snacks afterwards and talking with the folks. And the Rotary Club in Petoskey is absolutely wonderful. And so... So we've really enjoyed that. Well, you can't do wrong anywhere in northern Michigan. Well, it's but, uh, wonderful uh, areas. I mean, if you think about your listenership on 1210 and 1110, what a, what a diverse area and such uh, wonderful places. We were just there uh, with uh, Representative Schmidt a few days ago when we broadcast Friday morning. And at that time, you had not yet heard from candidate Rick Snyder. He hadn't spoken to you directly. You're one of the people who are very likely to be if he's elected uh, in the House of Representatives. Have you heard from him since then? I've talked with the campaign. So, uh -huh. we're, you know. A lot of issues out there. Uh, Mr. Snyder is very busy. Sure he is. And, you know, again, as, as uh, Senator Allen just said, getting him across the finish line is uh, job number one. 
He so. did tell me yesterday that he's been making efforts to reach out uh, and meet and talk with people. He did meet uh, on Monday with a number of the candidates that made it through the primary for the Republican side. So that was very exciting to have him uh, speak to them. And so, yes, he is getting out there. But it's, it's, a, it's a different level when you're running for a statewide office. And so we're excited uh, that he's the, the candidate. We're all getting behind him. And we just want to make sure we get him across the finish line November 2nd. But think about it. You know, you've got 80, over 80 counties no. to, to, to visit. I mean, I know from the 31 counties that we're on track that it becomes very, very difficult. And I, and I personally would much rather have him get elected than having to sit down with the meeting prior to the uh, general election because this is a very precious time. Can you ask me uh, or can you tell me what he means? I asked him yesterday. I mean, there are people who are concerned about the learning curve, that you don't have legislative experience, that there will be lots of new legislators when you come in. And his answer, to paraphrase, was, well, the legislators are all fine, nice people, but their culture is broken. So why would I want to learn a broken culture? I want to come in and do things my way. Uh, um, I'll ask you, Representative Schmidt, is that naive to talk like that, or does that make sense? I think that what we're going to have to do is really come together as a team, and that's why um, yesterday when he met, or excuse me, Monday, when he met with, uh, with our Republican nominees, and hopefully that we can uh, take back the House in, in Republican terms, that it's very critical. The, the culture... The process is fine. Everyone understands you need to introduce a bill, mm -hmm. go to the committee, etc. That's not changing. That's not changing. That's still technically the process. It's sometimes that the people that are involved in it. And, and I have to say that regardless, most people have good intentions for the state of Michigan. I, I certainly don't want to say uh, that the governor you know, doesn't care about Michigan or my colleagues or anything. But we haven't always come together, and that's very difficult. So it's sometimes it's more the people than the actual process. Is the culture broken? I don't think so, but we can always use some fresh blood. Senator Allen, the culture broken? Relationships are broken. That needs to be fixed. And that's a Senator Cropsey? Uh, Jason is absolutely right that this governor did not cultivate the relationships. Yep. The next governor needs to because it's all built upon relationships. We'll be right back in four minutes. It's Michael Patrick Shields.